And <laughs> this is really, really good because you see, if we would just let our R approach infinity in the limit. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Once again, it's time for Oh yeah, let's go ahead and get started today. I would like to take a look at this bad boy right here. You definitely have seen it before. Everyone has done it before. But we are going to do it the flammy way today. So I don't want to use stupid asymmetry or something. That's for fucking pussies. The cool way, not using complex analysis. That's for pussies. We are going to use complex analysis today. I hope you are excited. So we don't want to take a look at this thing right here at the moment. I just would like to take a look at something completely different and maybe you can already see where this new integral comes from. So let's take a look at the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log x squared plus one over x squared plus one dx. If you don't see where this comes from, I'm going to clarify everything in the end. <laughs> so we want to solve this right here, but like I said, with complex analysis. So we have to introduce some proper complex function, f of z, which is going to be the natural log of z plus i over z squared plus one. I hope you can already see where this comes from. No, you probably don't, but bear with me for a minute. So. This denominator right here, let's split, split it up properly. Positive 1 is nothing but negative i squared. And that's just the difference of two squares. So let's break this up into natural log of z plus i over z plus i on the one hand and z negative i. Okay, there we go. That's already looking good. And you see we have two poles right here on this function. One being i and the other one being negative i. So our poles are at z, 1 and 2, being equal to positive or negative i. Okay, coolio. And now I would like to set an appropriate curve that we are going to work with. And let's take a look at the complex plane right here. So we just want to take a look at the upper half of the complex plane with some gamma up here, this little curve. And those, this semicircle goes from negative r to R. And this is our contour C. So that means we are going to work with a contour C of this f of z right here, which is nothing but 2 pi times i times the sum of the residues of f of z. Okay, cool. But what are those residues? Well, the good thing is we only have to calculate one residue right now, which is a simple pole at that. And you see, we are on the upper half of the complex plane. So that means we are only dealing with our boy i right here. Boy i. <laughs> Never mind. So how can we calculate this residue? Well, the residue of f of z at the point z is equal to i is nothing but the limit as z approaches i of z minus i times f of z. But what is f of z? It's nothing but this right here. That's why I broke it up. I'm a broke as guacamole. I said the n word, my boys. I have to sense it. <laughs> I'm not fucking PewDiePie. Z plus i, z minus i. Okay, and you see this and that is going to cancel out. That don't, that doesn't pose us any problems anymore. Now we can just take the limit right here. So we end up with the natural log of two times i over two times i. And you see, that's just multiplicative. So let's use the natural log property to break this up in the natural log of two plus the natural log of i over two times i. And now just to get rid of this natural log of i right here, I want to clarify, we are only taking a look at the principal branch, the principal log. That means we are only in an interval from zero to two pi, you could say. So let's take a look at the graph in the complex plane. I have talked about this before, but still, let's do it one more time. So we have this right here, and you know, complex numbers, nothing but r times e to the i phi, where r is our length of the vector. And we are on the unit circle, so this is just one. And well, how can we get to i right here? Well, with an angle of pi over two right here. So our 
i is nothing but e to the i times pi over 2. Now take the natural log on both sides. This and that is going to cancel out. So we know that the natural log of i, the principal log at that, is nothing but i times pi over 2. And well, we can plug this into here. And then we have already simplified stuff a little bit. ln of 2 plus i times pi over 2 over 2 times i. And now we can just plug the stuff into here and then we are already on a good way. <laughs> I hope I'm not talking too fast, but we have talked about stuff like this before in other videos. Maybe I'm going to post some links in the description. Just go through my integral playlist and you are going to find many complex analysis videos that deal with little topics like this. Okay, I've written everything out. Here's our complex plane once again and now we can cancel stuff out nicely. So this 2i is going to cancel out right here and we are going to end up with pi times the natural log of 2 and well this is just plus i pi squared over 2. But on the other hand we still have other integrals to deal with because this is just our contour, some of the residues, blah blah blah. But on the other hand, we also have to deal with an integral of this gamma right here. So we have this, this gamma integral of f of z dz plus our integral going from negative r to r. And also this is just on the real number line, so we can work with a real valued function once again. So let's just use f of x in this case and this is just natural log of x plus i over x squared plus i plus 1 dx. Okay, but now I would like to do some little manipulations because right now we are not even close to our original integrand that we wanted to go back to. So why not split this integral up into two parts? So at first we have an integral from negative r to 0. Let's put it that way. And now we can just add the second part, namely from 0 to positive r of the natural log of x plus i over x squared plus 1 dx. And well, I would like to add those two integrals together later in the game, but for that we need to introduce a new substitution. So let's just say that we want x to go to negative x in that case. That also means that dx is nothing but negative dx. So let's deal with that. So we are going to end up with this gamma integral right here. Never mind, plus. And now an integral going from, well, we are going to change signs right here. So from r to 0 of the natural log of i minus x over negative x, but squared is just x squared once again. So that's good. The denominator stays the same. We can add them together nicely plus 1, negative dx, plus this chunk, integral 0 to r, natural log x plus i over x squared plus 1 dx. Coolio, you see we have this negative sign right here, so that allows us to change the upper and lower bounds, integral from 0 to r, and this is really good, because we are integrating with respect to the same variable, right here, dummy variable stuff, same up and lower bounds, same denominator, so why not bring those two together? So we have an integral, the gamma 1, plus an integral going from 0 to r of natural log i minus x, plus the natural log x plus i over x squared plus 1, dx. <laughs> so that's really cool. And now we can just make use of the natural log property right here to turn, to turn this stuff into... Um, let me put it on a new chalkboard, I'm terribly sorry. The gamma integral plus. And now we have an integral from 0 to r of the natural log of x plus i times i minus x over x squared plus 1 dx. And you see, this basically is just a difference of two squares. We can bring it together. So we have this gamma integral plus an integral from 0 to r of the natural log of. And this is going to evaluate to i squared minus x squared over x squared plus 1 dx. i squared is nothing but negative 1. And you see, if we would just factor out a negative one right here, we would indeed end up with our original natural log of x squared plus one. So that would be really good. 
So let's do this. So we have this chunk and we factored out a negative one. And now we can just use the natural log property, in this case to break this up, into, now we have gamma integral as always, plus an integral running from zero to r of the natural log of negative one, plus the natural log of x squared plus one over x squared plus one dx. And we have talked about this before, principal logarithm, in this case, natural log of, no, uh, we just have talked about the case for i, I'm terribly sorry, but for negative one, we just have an angle of pi in this case. And our r is still one, so we have negative one being nothing but e to the i times pi, taking the natural log on both sides, we end up with i times pi. I hope you can see where this came from. So let's plug this stuff in, and also that's additive right here, so we can use the integral property is linearity to break this up into two integrals. And then we already came extremely far. Integral from zero to r. On the one hand, we have i times pi. Let's bring this i to the outside, actually, over x squared plus one, dx. And on the other hand, we have an integral running from zero to r of the natural log of x squared plus one over x squared plus one, dx. And <laughs> This is really, really good because, you see, if we would just let our r approach infinity in the limit. <gasps> I dropped my chike right now. I lost all my strength while doing this thing right here. Then we would end up with our original integral. And you also see, we have to take the real part of our original contour integral right here because we have an imaginary part right here and we have a real part. So, in the next step, we are just going to take the limit as r approaches infinity and see what we get. Whew. We came so far, it's, it's crazy. I love you guys. Just want to say that you are my family. <laughs> so, like I said, we want to take the limit as r approaches infinity on both sides. If we take a closer look on the left hand side, our limit wouldn't really affect anything right here. So, there wouldn't really make a difference because those are just constants. But on this side right here, we are going to take the limit as r approaches infinity. And as a matter of fact, I'm not going to go into detail this time, I have talked about this before. Use the triangle inequality, reverse triangle inequality, observe that the natural log, the absolute value of natural log, grows way slower than 1 over r squared minus 1. Blah, blah, blah. Watch my other videos on complex analysis. By a matter of fact, this gamma integral goes to zero in the limit when r goes to infinity. Try it out for yourself using the tools that I have used in other videos. That thing is also called Jordan's Lemma, when you just take the limit when r goes to infinity and the gamma integral vanishes in the upper half of the complex plane. So, when we take the limit, we end up with this being zero. And then we have an integral from zero to infinity of the natural log x squared plus one over x squared plus one dx plus i times the integral from zero to infinity pi over x squared plus one dx. And <laughs> like I said before, we only want to take the real part, but we can kill two birds with one stone right now, just as a little matter of fact. Our imaginary part states that this thing right here, this integral, let's put it here, pi times the integral from zero to infinity dx over x squared plus one is nothing but pi squared over two. And you see, this pi, and that is going to cancel out, is not equal to zero, we can divide by it, and this integral only evaluates to the inverse tension from zero to infinity. And now we have shown that this integral is indeed pi over two. Woohoo! So there was um, a little proof on the side, but here's the real deal, <laughs> the real part. So the real part of this contour integral, f of z, d z, is nothing but, well, this chunk right here, pi times the natural log of two, but it is also our original integral that we wanted to deal with integral zero to infinity of natural log x squared plus one over x squared plus one dx. And now you might seriously ask yourself, why have we 
talked about this right here, we had a different integral in mind. Well, for this I would like to just introduce another substitution. Um, let's say, let x be equal to the tangent of t. That also means that the x is nothing but secant squared of t dt. And now we can plug this new information into our integral right here. So we are going to end up with, um, now we have pi times natural log of 2 being equal to an integral running from, well, the lower bound has to be zero, you see, so tangent is only zero at zero, and our tangent only goes to infinity, you could say, when our t is pi over 2. So just take a look at the graph, or you can just take the inverse tangent on both sides. It's bijective on this interval, so we could do that just for observation purposes. So our upper bound is pi over 2. Just like with the original, original integral we dealt with. And now we have to plug in the other stuff. So now we have the natural log of tangent squared of t plus 1 over tangent squared of t plus 1 times the secant squared of t differentiate, uh, integrated with respect to t. <laughs> and you see this denominator right here is nothing but secant squared of t using the fundamental theorem of trigonometry. So this and that is going to cancel out actually. And same spiel right here with the argument of natural log. So we have pi times natural log of 2 is nothing but an integral running from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of secant squared of t integrated with respect to t. But what is our secant squared boy right here? Well, that's nothing but 1 over cosine squared of t. So this is 1 over cosine squared of t. But what is 1 over cosine squared of t? 1 over cosine squared is nothing but cosine to the negative 2 power. And by our natural log properties, we can bring this negative 2 power to the outside actually. So we are going to end up with pi times natural log of 2 being nothing but integral from 0 to pi over 2 of um, negative 2 times natural log of the cosine of t integrated with respect to t. And now we can just divide both sides by negative 2, it's not equal to 0. Take a look at the piano axioms. Negative 2. And then we are done. So. That's actually quite spicy. I really love this way of doing this integral. It's nearly as cool as doing it with symmetry. <laughs> so the value of this integral is nothing but negative pi over 2, natural log of 2, and this is one of those integrals where you have a negative value at the end, which is quite weird in my opinion, because most of the time you are just going to end up with a positive value. But we are done. I thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. Share those videos everywhere, please. Those are quite some effort this week. Seriously, it, my special little treat for you guys took like five hours of editing and four hours of recording. It was absolute hell. If you want to support the channel a bit more, you can buy those stupid S t-shirts I created and you can also support me on Patreon, blah blah blah. To conclude this video, I love you guys, appreciate you, stay positive and up until the next video, have a, uh, let me see. No. Mom, get the camera. Once again, a quantum information and computation day. See ya.